It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Brian Hoyer. Hi, and welcome to another Dice Tower iOS game review. My name is Brian Hoyer, and this week we're going to be looking at Food Fight, a card-based game where your cards are basically different types of food that you throw down in a variant of war meaning the highest card wins. And what you're battling over is you're trying to win different meals. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, to add up points, and the highest score at the end of the game wins. What does it look like and how does it play completely? Well, let's look at the iPad and find out. Here's the main menu to Food Fight. As you can see, it's got the typical offerings. There's a tutorial. Play Online. Now, my Play Online has been grayed out since the moment I got it. If you know how to get that to activate or to work, let me know, because I read everywhere. I played a few games. I thought maybe you had to unlock it. I can't figure out how to play online, but supposedly you can play online where you make a play, it notifies the other person, and they can play whenever they get around to it. There's the offline play mode. You can watch the credits, who designed it. Um, options, there's a campaign mode, which shows kind of like a map of the city that you battle over, a rule book, <clears throat> and the card gallery. The first thing I suggest you do with this game is read the rule book if you've never played it before. It does make a big difference. And then go into the options. You can adjust the music, the sound effects. I turn the game speed to slow and the animation speed to slow because, as you'll see, once you get into the game, it goes fast and furious, and so much of it is automated that if you've never played it before, things will fly by, and you'll have no clue why you won or lost a hand sometimes. So I'll slow it down so hopefully I can explain it a little bit better and give us a little more time to read the cards. Click OK when you're done here. And the second thing I suggest you do is go to the card gallery. Because the cards can be kind of small on the screen when you're playing the game, and like I said, because things can go so fast, you can't always read the cards and tell why somebody won or why they got the number of points they did. And this will also help us become familiar with the layout of the cards also. So let's take a look at some of the characters. Okay, so here you have General Donut. It gives their name and a goofy little picture to kind of go for the humorous theme. It is food fight after all. And all the characters are various types of foods. And it says, he is good for fighting at breakfast. Now he's worth six yumminess, which is basically your strength or your battle, uh, your power, if you will, when you face off against an opponent. Um, the six yumminess is good at all times. But if you look down here, your other breakfast troops have a plus four. Okay, um, Being a breakfast food, a lot of times their bonuses will affect other breakfast foods. Also, you want to know what meal they're good for because if you battle them in that meal, let's say I throw him down for when fighting over breakfast for our battlefield, he wins on a tie if the other one the players throws on say a lunch or a dinner card instead. So you've got their name, their photo, any bonuses or attributes they have, and then their yumminess or power. Like I said, become familiar with some of the other cards. There's Corporal Cinnamon Roll. Again, terrible yumminess. He's not a very powerful card, but if you play him when battling for breakfast, he gets plus 8, which makes him a 9, which is actually one of the higher rankings you can get without other additional bonuses. And you'll want to look through all of the cards. Here's our breakfast players. If you want to know who's good for lunch, you just click on the lunch icon. You've got General Cheeseburger, Mean Burrito, etc. Familiarize yourself with the dinner players. The battlefields, here's what you'll be fighting for. At the beginning of a round, there we go, the Bay of Pigs in a Blanket. It's a breakfast, and this battle's worth one, so if you were to win this battle, you get one victory point. Remember the Alamode, Battle of the Bulge, Mascara Little Big Corn. You get the idea. You can also see the Snack Kings and the Condiments, and these get you bonuses added to your characters. He's an instant card. You'll be able to play him on somebody else, and if you play him on one of those food characters, it says play only if you have four or fewer victory points. Your troop now has plus six. So, Medic Mustard is an instant card you can add to one of your characters. Your lunch troop, so if you play him on a lunch character, has plus three. And again, I would become familiar with these before jumping into battle also. So now we're ready to play, and we're going to play offline because I can't online. And I've started a game and named myself Chef Brian. And here's how it works. Here are the two battles. We're going to choose to either go for the defeat at Watermelon Lou for one point, and that's a dinner battle, or we're going to do the Freedom Fries battle up here at the top, which is lunch for three points. You need to get ten points total to win the game. So it'd be smart to battle for lunch, being as it's worth three. Now, you start by doing the draft. 
for the draft, you get nine cards. I can pick one of these cards to keep, and then I pass the other eight to the next player, and they'll pass me theirs, and I pick one from that hand again, and you keep going until you have your hand. So basically, the nice thing is you know all of the cards that are in play for the game. You just don't necessarily know who has them, because it can be up to a four-player game. And then you don't know which ones they'll play, because you can only actually choose five from your hand to play in the actual game itself. So, do I want to start with the PhD Pepper? Do I want to go, you can double tap, Sergeant Spaghetti, he's dinner. And I want to battle for that lunch for three points. So let's go for, let's see who are my lunch characters here. Looks like I've got a lot of breakfast. There we go. Sergeant Fish Stick, he's only worth three. But, I'll take him. And then I pass those cards on to them, and they give me their cards. And now I can look again. And I have a lot of breakfast and dinner, it looks like. However, he's worth 11 points. And I'm going to take him. And you continue drafting until you have 9 cards. So as you can see, I finished the draft, and I have my 9 cards to choose from at the bottom here of the screen. To actually play the game, I don't use all nine cards up front. I choose five warriors that I want to send into battle, five character cards. Now, it makes sense to take the green ones down here, because those are my lunch characters. So, I'll throw those three into battle, because they're going to be stronger when I fight for lunch. I can't throw the instants in, but uh, Sergeant Spaghetti, he's worth seven. He'll be good to throw in. And so is General Chicken. He's worth six. So even though they're not necessarily lunch characters... They are powerful. I choose my five, I click done, and now I want to go for lunch. And gameplay starts. Now, as you see, a dog card came out. If they do not play a card, then I have to fight over the uh, battle with the dog. In other words, the dog will eat anything. I have to fight over table scraps. So a dog card came out of the pile up here worth seven points. I played a card worth six. See, my yumminess is six. If I click done now, he wins by one. However, I can play these instants. And this pepper will give me a plus three. So now when I click done, my nine to seven, I win. And it's just like war. You throw down, and the highest card wins. He's got 20. I've got three. I don't think this is going to happen. But I'll throw out a Vlad the Clampire on him. And I get to choose the top eight cards for any additional instance. I keep the two instant cards. And now I can add them. And it still will not be enough to add up to 20. There's nothing I can do. I'm going to lose the battle. The dinner mints show you how many battles you've won. So now the next card is a 9. I have 6. The instants or any cards that you can play will kind of glow down here at the bottom to let you know if there's anything you can add. There's nothing I can do about it. My 6 to 9, I lose. He gets 2 dinner mints. And I still only have 1. I really desperately need to start winning some rounds here. I have yumminess of 15, however, because of his bonuses. Plus 3 for each instant you have played this day. Well, I played a lot of instant cards over here, so he's really racked up a lot of points. And that 3 quickly became a 15, and I win that dinner mint. My next card comes out. And I have 11 to 8. I'll take that one. And it goes, now as you can see, I just won dinner, and I got three victory points. Remember, the first to ten wins. Now, that player is choosing to play, and since I have no cards left to play, they're going to fight the dog for the scraps. And as you can see, everything's automated, and you just get to kind of watch the game play. Now, you might ask, why would Veggie Vicky up here choose not to throw any cards in and play? Well, obviously because they didn't have any cards that were good for the uh, meal that I chose to fight over, lunch. Since I had taken over the lunch cards, they had saved up and they wanted to fight for that other battle, which they unfortunately lost. See, she has no victory points. She lost to the dog overall. So you do have some, some strategy. You choose what cards... And while they may know what nine cards you have down here, they don't necessarily know which five you're going to throw in. They don't know when you'll use your instance. And then they may not know what battle you're going to go for, uh, which meal, rather. And, of course, you can always choose not to play them. So now we move on to round two. And as you can see, the overall score is I have three victory points. They have zero. Remember, the first to ten wins. Um, I chose a lot of breakfast because I see there's a breakfast worth three points up here. So I click that I'm done with my draft. That's the meal I want to go for. 
and this time they're actually going to battle me. So this is how the game would normally play. The player throws on an 8, I have a 6, I have no instance to play, I lose that hand. They throw them, ooh, the ketchup gives them a 9, I only have a 4, they get it. Miami is a 6 to their 9, their cinnamon roll is only a 1 but gets plus 8 at breakfast. Things are not looking good. Now the good thing about my private pancake is he gets plus 4 for every other private pancake I have in my hand. And I had several. 6 to 9, I lose again. You can see the mints piling up at the top of the screen. And they just took that battle worth 3 points and now we're tied. And we'll keep playing for meals until one of us finally hits 10. So, final thoughts on Food Fight for iOS. Um, let's start with the positives. Okay, it has good multiplayer, up to four players. You can play on one iPad, kind of like a traditional board game, lay it out. You can play online, where you make a move, it notifies them, and they get to play whenever they get the chance. Kind of works with friend style. It works on iPhones and iPod Touches. Um, so all of that carries over fairly well. If you're playing alone, you can play against computer AI, and it does have varying levels of difficulty there, which is also nice. Um, the game itself, I think it has some interesting, goofy artwork. The theme is, is well done. I mean, the theme carries over from the characters being different foods to instead of your um, strength, uh, you have yumminess points. You're battling over different meals. You can win dinner mints. You fight the dog over table scraps. So it kind of all ties together really well there also. Um, and it is well made, you know, what with the music and everything. It comes together fairly well. I like the fact that you know what card everybody has. There's a, there's a little bit of strategy, like, okay, if I took these cards, I know that these other cards are remaining in play, but what I don't know is which five they're going to send into battle, and when they're going to choose to use those instant cards um, to kind of add on to their characters and throw me off. So there is a lot going for it there. Now, how it's executed on the iPad, that's the downside. I really didn't get a feel like I was playing much of it. I felt like the game just played itself. As you saw, and we watched a lot of gameplay on the iPad in this review, more than usual, um, once you've chosen your five warriors, it automatically goes over and the computer quote-unquote shuffles them for you, and then the computer quote-unquote throws down the first card for you. There's nothing that you have to do. You just watch two cards pop up. Oh, it's added up the scores. I'm losing. Look at the bottom. Did it highlight a card I can play? No, there's no uh, instant card I can add. I guess I click done. That's the end of that battle. And it continues doing that. It's just play, play, play. Now, I slowed it down so we could watch and talk about it and I can narrate a little bit. Um, you can speed it up, and the game will go very quickly. It plays fast, but it plays itself. I mean, I just got I have to keep coming back to that point. Um, what it did do, however, mission accomplished, it made me interested in getting the physical version. I kind of want to try and actually throw down the card and play and kind of have that, you know, ha, take that when you play a really good card or whatever. You don't have that interaction with this, unfortunately. So... I, I will recommend it, but lightly. I'm going to give it one thumbs up because it is well made and because it does, you know, the package comes together well. It just doesn't play, I don't know, it doesn't play good enough for me. It didn't hook me. Okay, so if you did not like what you saw, playing the game isn't going to change your mind. If you thought it looked fun, you're looking for a quick, easy game, one thumbs up. It, it is well done. It's worth playing. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.